created at that place. So for instance, uh, the, the filter might look something like this. Uh, with some rituals. So the low pass filter will look something like this in the real world, so that when you pull your transform back to the pre uh, time domain, you might have something that not looking like that, but uh, maybe something that's causal instead of non-causal. Okay? So causality penalizes ideality in the frequency domain. If you have something as ideal as this, in its infinite frequency component, when they have a step discontinuity. By now you understand that whenever you have a step discontinuity, what does it mean? It means that you need a lot of Fourier components to constitute and make up that step discontinuity. And you need a lot of time domain signal to make this step discontinuity. So one way to avoid having to make this step discontinuity with many time signal is to have something that changes more gradually. So that it does not have a lot of high frequency components so that you can get this with less time signal and you can sort of obey causality in the time domain as well. Okay. So let me look at section 10.5 then, which is just about the delay line. This concept is actually rather simple. So this is section 10.5, that if you have an impulse response that looks something like this, and you've probably seen something like this before, something with an impulse response that looks like this, is the propagation channel of the wireless telephone or wireless phone system. Because whatever that you send from yourself to another person, that signal is always going to be diminished by an amplitude k, okay, but it is also going to be delayed by a certain time t naught. Okay, because the guy is not going to hear you instantly. It takes a speed of light or something uh, less to send the signal from point A to point B. So this is the good model for your cell phone or your wireless phone as you send signal from point A to point B. And then we know that when you find a Fourier transform of this, Okay, the Fourier transform of this is going to be e to the minus j omega t naught. So, then, uh, so if you have an output to this system, then it's going to be just k delta t minus t naught convolved with an input, and using the delay property of this, or using the sifting property of the data function, Okay, so this is actually k delta t convolving with f t minus t naught if you use the delay property of convolution, and then this is just going to be k f of t minus t naught. Okay, so what it says is that when you have an output from this system, is always a time delay version of the input scaled by a certain amplitude k. Okay. So the textbook gives a rather simple example. Example 1020, you have input f of t is equal to u of t. Okay. Then the output y of t is equal to 0 0.2 u t minus 10 by h of t. What is h of t equal to? It's a piece of cake, right? So if f of t is that, output is that, then the impulse response of this system is very good. Okay, 0 0.2 delta t minus 10. Okay, so that is rather simple, and all of you know how to get there. 
Um, <coughs> So I have some time left, I can either review chapter 10 or I can go and talk about chapter 11. Which one do you prefer that I do? Let's finish chapter 11. <laughs> no, I can only talk about the beginning of chapter 11. Okay, maybe I can do some revision, okay? Some old stuff. So that you can regurgitate some old stuff and have those imprinted in your mind. Can we do some impulse trains? You want to do impulse print? Yeah. Okay, I can revise impulse print. Okay? I can revise sampling theorem and all that kind of things. So, all of you should have this committed to your memory. This Fourier transform to 2 pi over capital T n is to the minus infinity delta omega minus n. What is that factor I should put there? 2 pi over t. 2 pi over t. Okay? Which means that if I have an impulse train in the time domain in the same spacing in t, then I have an impulse train in the frequency domain and the spacing is 2 pi over t. The closer the spacing this is, the wider that using this. Okay. okay? So this is extremely important. I can use that to sample a signal. I can construct, if I have a signal f of t, okay, I can construct a digitized version of this signal by multiplying this signal with an impulse train. Okay? And then I can use the sampling property of an impulse function, f of t times delta t minus t naught is equal to what? I think a lot of you do not know this. f of t times the delta function can be simplified to f of t naught times the delta function. Okay, it was in your homework, and quite a number of you asked me about that. So this can be simplified to. If I apply that theorem, sampling theorem, or sampling property, term by term, so I have this instead. So what it says is that if I have this thing, I need to only store this data. This data need only to be stored at sample value in a space apart, okay? But what this says is that The Fourier transform of, if I find f b of omega, which is the Fourier transform of this quantity, it will be the Fourier transform of this convolving with the Fourier transform of that. So it will be f of omega convolving with, uh, convolving with this thing over here, okay? 2 pi over t, the impulse frame. and 2 pi over capital T. Okay? But I'm always missing this factor of 2 pi. So I have to put in the factor of 2 pi there. This follows from the symmetry property of Fourier transform. Okay, you put in the 2 pi. And then what you have then is that if, if f of omega, which is a Fourier transform of this thing, looks something like this, and in in the case of your homework, it looks something like this. Okay, but it can be anything. F of omega can be anything. So it can be something like this. Then, when you convolve this thing with an impulse train, then F of B of omega okay, will be something that has 1 over t. Okay, this will be diminished by 1 over t, and then you will have all this replication. <coughs> Where are these centers? This is 0. The next one is actually sampled at 2 pi over t. The next one is centered at 4 pi over t, and so on. Okay? 
and then this is minus 2 pi over t, minus 4 pi over t. And you want to make all these bands far apart enough so that they don't overlap. Okay? They don't overlap so that if you pass this system through a low pass filter, which is an idealized one as I just mentioned uh, before, and if this low pass filter has the amplitude of t, it cancels the one over t and you get the original signal. Okay? So, what is the sampling rate? Say if, the, if this number is 2 pi times b, where b is the bandwidth of the signal, the signal that you are having, 2 pi over t must be larger, 2 pi over t must be larger than 4 pi over b. Okay, which means that the sampling rate, 1 over t must be larger than 2 times the bandwidth. Okay, so if the bandwidth is 20 kilohertz, like your voice signal, your sampling rate must be at least 40 kilohertz. So if you look at the CD, if you open up the CD recording rate, they ask you what recording rate you want to record those things at. They're always at about 41 kilohertz, yes? Is the bandwidth always just the highest frequency? For the low pass filter, low pass signal, the bandwidth is highest frequency to the right. Okay, for the band, band signal, the bandwidth is this. I don't remember if it was one of the tests on homework, but I felt like I tried to describe B as what you just said there. Where yes. The, the difference between the highest in the signal and the lowest in the signal? The zero, the zero. Well, okay, it's measured from zero to that. See, yeah, this see, one is the band pass. Yeah, okay, band pass signal. Zero. Okay, but this I is the band like In the example they did, they, they ended up going all the way back to zero. No, it, it depends on whether you are talking about a low pass signal or a band pass signal. Okay, band pass signal, you have to define it that way. So it's rather confusing. So actually, we have been talking about voice signal. What is the bandwidth needed to transmit the television signal? It turns out that it's about 5 megahertz for low resolution television. Maybe 10 megahertz for high resolution television, HD, TV, and that kind of thing. So this thing can be on the order of 10 megahertz. Okay, for some very high frequency, high resolution television signal. And then you need the sampling rate to be quite high. You need this T to go up to at least, if it's 10 megahertz, you need the sampling rate to be at 20 megahertz. Okay? I guess I use up all my time. Okay. And then you can